So for this patch, we're going to be looking at record mode, which is, you know, represented by this yellow animation here. And with the second setting selector, we're in yellow, which means we're in clock mode. And so when you hear clock, you tend to think of a steady clock signal, but in this case, it can be receiving any type of rhythmic information. It could be a pulse, three bar or four bars or three bars, or it could be 16th notes, or it could be any sort of rhythm that you want. The point is, is that when we send a clock in here, and we record by pressing the button, we're able to create discrete values. And by that, I mean, often with Gliss, you need to slide between values. So you have a continuous value, but in clock mode, you're able to record stepped values. And we're gonna use those stepped values to control the positions of two sequences, which are then controlling the pitch of an oscillator, the timbre of an oscillator, and some effects parameters over here. Clock mode is also really necessary if you want to be playing back things in time with an external sequencer, your door, etc. So here we're using an external sequencer. I'm gonna press play, and we can hear the oscillator just playing a sound one note, no timbral changes at all. We can see we're receiving clock information into both these glisses as represented by the yellow button. And now when I press the button to record, I'm going to draw in my gesture and that is going to control the playback position of this sequencer. And you'll hear what I mean. Press the button again to stop recording. And now what I just drew in is playing back. So it's moving the position of the sequencer around, which is in effect giving us a long chord progression, which we've generated by feeling it out musically at the time. And now I'm gonna turn up the effects and repeat the same, same concept on the second gliss controlling this sequencer over here. So I hit record. And now that's playing back. So anytime I can record over the top of this, make a shorter sequence. I can erase it with three button taps, draw in something else. So this is a good example of how we can have Gliss in between a clock generator and then use it to control other CV sources, which then control your modules. So now I can go back to the sequencer and add steps, which will increase the playback rate of both the Glisses. So now we have three steps per bar here, and we can see Gliss is moving around at a rate reflecting that. We'll do it for the second track. So we now have four pulses per bar. And I can add some other sounds to flesh out the musical context. Can go back and record a different pattern. So this is a great way to feel out musical ideas on the fly and have them make sure that they fit in time with everything else that you're recording.